Hey everyone, this is Shane here with Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you something that I wish I knew how to do right when I started out producing. I'm gonna show you how you can make any loop, especially a percussive loop, things like hi-hat loops or top loops, unique and interesting to your music. How you can put your own spin on it and ultimately how you can start with a loop and make it something that's tailor-made for your track or your production. So if you've seen sentiments like this online where people will say things like, if you use loops, you're not a real producer or if you use loops, you're cheating. Ignore all that BS. So at the end of the day, no listen listener cares if you use the loop or if you didn't use the loop. Surprise, motherfucker. But it is always nice to impart your own personal flavor on things and make your music sound just like that, your music. So in this video, I'm gonna be working in a DAW called Logic X for the beginners out there. If you guys watch this channel, you know I love Logic. I also love Ableton too. You'll be able to follow along in pretty much any DAW. You just need to know how to slice audio and almost every DAW can slice audio and then assign those slices to notes on a keyboard, usually in like a drum rack or some type of drum plugin. So that being said, let's dive in and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to this drop section here. Now, there's not a lot of things going on percussively right now, and that's by design. It's so that we can add those elements as we look at this technique, this process in this video. So there's just a couple basic drum sounds. We got kick, clap, snare, and a really simple hi-hat. Let's take a listen. So all the sounds you just heard are from a pack of roses, and that's where I'm gonna be grabbing some of the percussive loops from as well. So I'm gonna go into a perk loop folder. I want to mess around with that before I go full tilt on the hi-hats. So let's find something that's at the tempo that we're at so we don't have to stretch it. Now you can do that obviously. You can time stretch and warp and make things fit. And the process we're using where we're gonna slice an audio track to basically a MIDI track works really well when the tempo isn't the same, but there's enough here my tempo's at 124 beats per minute. There's a bunch in this folder, so I can just find one. Let's try that. We'll drag this into a audio track for now and we'll take a listen. So if you're a beginner, what you might do is you might think, oh, I'll just, I'll just kind of turn that down and let's go grab another loop. I think it could be better, right? That's the whole point of what we're gonna be looking at in this video. It could be more tailor-made to this track. For instance, I could find pockets of the rhythm that really accentuate either elements of my lead or my bass line. So let's go back to this loop. We're gonna make a new track and I'm gonna make a software instrument track. Now, this is where I mentioned earlier that every DAW pretty much can do this. I know you can do it in Ableton really easily and we're gonna see, we're gonna see how to do it in Logic right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this audio file and I'm essentially going to turn it into a drum machine designer. And what Logic is gonna do, all you do is drag it over to a uh, empty software instrument track. So let me delete Serum off of this. And we're going to see this option appear. You want to do drum machine designer. And what Logic's gonna do is it's gonna slice the transient, the audio at every transient it finds and put each transient on a pad or a cell in drum machine designer. And then it's gonna spit out this MIDI region with this kind of ascending weird looking <laughs> MIDI pattern. Basically what this is, is this is the uh, pattern playing back in time. Now the cool thing about this is because now it's MIDI, if I change the tempo of my session to one, it's like 115, that's perfectly in time now with 115. And I didn't have to time stretch it. It's because it's chopping the audio, fading the ends, of the sample so you don't get pops and clicks and then it allows you to change the tempo. So that's a really nice little tip if you're having trouble getting a loop to fit a tempo or a BPM. Instead of time stretching it with a warp mode in uh, Ableton or a flex mode in Logic, try doing what I just did there. So let's go back to 124 BPM and let's start to dissect what's going on in this loop. So the sound I don't like right away is this sound right here. So I'm just gonna go through find out where that sound hits basically every time. And we're gonna mute it. All right, so I like everything else about this loop. It's kind of that nice offbeat shaker that a lot of house tracks use. So it's a pretty popular type of sound. But what I can do now is I can go back in here and I can unmute this. And I can go find a sample that fits that sound. So let's go back into our one shots folder and we're gonna go to, we'll stay in the percussive folder. Let's find something that's not as harsh. That's harsher. Let's try this rattle actually. Let's try that. So we're gonna go back into 
session and just drag and drop that right there. So now this sample is that shaker. So I can just kind of keep repeating that process. I can go through, turn off samples, add other sounds until I get this kind of custom to me loop. So let's, let's get one more sound in here. Right, I like this tiny, tiny snare here. Let's listen to this. So the cool thing about this now being kind of in an instrument and as opposed to loop is I can go in and if I don't like the uh, pitch, I can change it. I can quickly turn down the volume. Let's pitch this down a couple. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Right, that new sound we just worked, we just put in works so much better than the old one. Let's turn on the volume just a little bit more on it. And I actually want that to happen again. I really like that sound. I think it adds this nice little lift to the beat. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing with a hi-hat loop now. All right, so this hi-hat loop is kind of the hi-hat loop that's going to give the song a little bit of a pacier feel in the drop, right? It's not keeping that house rhythm, that kind of house meter with the upbeats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and rearrange some of the notes that I don't like because pretty much the sounds of... The sound of it is fine, right? It's a hi-hat, closed hi-hat loop. I just want to rearrange the order of some of the notes. All right, so we pretty much created two custom loops that we're now layering together. Now, I shouldn't say custom loops, but loops that are more unique, that are more, I guess, uh, fitting for this track. So let's play it in context of the drop now and see what we have with these two green tracks. All right, so that's going to sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.